Do you have multiple servers and VM? Is their access secure? Do you need to share access to them with your team or customers? Let's discover Apache Guacamole, a free open source solution to create a safe and secure bastion for your infrastructure. It allows you to manage credentials from one place, view history to know exactly who and when someone connected to your machines, and protect your resource ports from being vulnerable by giving access only to Guacamole. Together, we'll create an instance, set up connections to a Windows and Ubuntu machine, and dive into the main features. Are you ready to discover this amazing open source tool? Tool widely used by enterprises. Let's see how to start using it. You can install it in one of your server by going to the official website and download section. Or use our platform, Elestio, to take care for you of the installation, backup, updates, and maintenance. To install Guacamole on our platform, go to ls.io, hit login, click on deploy my first service, search for Guacamole, hit select, Choose your cloud provider, I will choose Scaleway. Choose your region based on where you are and where you prefer. Adjust your service plan, like the CPU and RAM and storage you need. And hit next. You have the choice between different level of support, I will keep the included one. You can rename your instance and let's hit create service. Do you receive an email when your instance is ready? Open it and click here to get the password. Then here you can click here to copy the password to your clipboard and access your instance by clicking on the admin UI link. On the top left, you will have that request of permission to see text and images from the clipboard. I highly recommend you to accept it because it will allow you when you are connected to other instance to copy paste from your local device to the remote one. Let's connect to Guacamole. The username is root and the password, I just paste it from my clipboard and hit login. The first time you arrive, it can be a bit scary because we don't have any connection yet and you just see no recent connection. So the first thing we need to do is to add some connection. Go on the top right here, open settings and jump into connections. We will see the other settings after. Click on new connection. Here it can be a bit scary, but we will fill it together and you will see that we don't feel a lot of options. It's just when you need them, they are here for you to use. But don't be scared, let's do it together. So the name is just a name we want to see in Guacamole. So let's name it Windows VM. Then location, it's the group within Guacamole. So we don't created any other group. So there is just the main one for the moment. So let's keep root and protocol because we want to use a Windows VM. We have to select RDP, then maximum number of connections. Let's say we want only two connections at the same time, but only one by different users. So if you are connected from another place, it will log out the other one. But you can have two different persons connected at the same time. Then we can skip load balancing and proxy parameters to go to the network parameter. For hostname, you set the IP of your server and the port for Windows is 3389. Then for the authentication, I guess you already have those information based on your server. For me, the username is administrator and I paste the password from my clipboard. Then again, it is specific to Windows here, but for security mode, we need NLA and ignore server certificate because it will ask a question and when using Guacamole, we want to ignore it. So we just keep it. Let's see if we need any other setting, but I think we are good and hit save here. Now you can see we have our first connection available here. So let's go back to the home. Here it is the place where we want to access our different connections and click on Windows VM. And I'm now connected to my Windows VM over Guacamole which means within my browser, I can do anything like going to google.com, do anything I will do on my VM, do any settings, install Visual Studio, develop, but I'm in my web browser connected to my remote instance. Once you have finished using it or when you want to go back to it, you just hit previous on the top left of your browser and you will see it will bring you back to Guacamole so here it's still open, so you can reopen it if you need to. Otherwise, if you want to close it here, you can close it and it will disconnect you from the Windows instance. Before diving into all the different settings, let's connect to another instance. So let's go back to settings, go to connections. And what we will do is we will create a new connection to this Guacamole instance, because under the hood, it is a Ubuntu server. Let's name it dev instance 
it has no importance location we didn't create a group and the protocol i think we will choose ssh max number of connection we can keep two at the same time and one per user then switch to network and here the authentication and settings are a bit different we can go back to elestio open our instance and search for the ipv4 address so it's this one available here let's copy and paste it in host name the port it's 22 then we need to add our ssh key to get it we need to go to our server go to tools and open a terminal we need to run a few comments but it's pretty easy Let's do it together. It will prompt you the settings to open the terminal. Copy the password to your clipboard, open it, and it's root and paste the password. And now we are connected to our instance with a terminal. We can run the commands to get our SSH key. First thing we need to do is to go into the SSH folder. To do so, we do cd dot ssh to get the private key we just have to use cat to display the content of a file and show id underscore rsa and just copy paste everything including the comment on the top and below go to guacamole and paste it in private key the username it will be root and then we need to get our public key to get it it's still in ssh folder but this time it's id rsa dot pub you copy everything and paste it in public host key. But we still need to do one more thing. To tell our server that it will allow connection using that key, we need to edit a file, which is named authorized keys here. So to open it with a text editor, we can use nano and open authorized keys. Here you have the list of your keys. Go to the bottom of the file and paste the key you have. Once it's done, Control X to quit and Y to save. Then hit enter and it will quit. If you cut the authorized key, you should see the new one here. Perfect, now it should be good. We can go below and save the connection to our Ubuntu instance. Go back to home. Let's try to see if we didn't do any mistake. Let's open dev instance. And we have, you have been disconnected. So maybe I did something wrong. Let's go back to settings, connections, and dev instance okay the issue is that in network you don't have to add the public host key just having the private key set here and in the terminal to add the authorized key is enough so let's empty it hit save go back to the home and try to connect to that instance and fine we are connected in ssh to our ubuntu instance which contains our guacamole instance so we can run top and see all the different processes and any command that we want on our instance. Let's keep it open, but we will go to our guacamole instance in another tab too. And now we can go to the settings and we see the active session, which is this one here. What we can do, imagine it's not me in another tab, but it's another user and I want to disconnect it. I click here and kill session so I know who it is. The username is root, but it will be another username and kill sessions. Now, if I go back here, you have been disconnected. This is very useful if you manage a huge number of servers and want to know who is connected to it and when. Then you have more information. If you dive into the history tab, you can see who was connected from what time during what time and to which server. Currently, we just have two but if you manage a lot you have a clear overview of what is going on on your different servers and you know their ip from where they got connected currently we are using the root admin account but of course if you are using it for your team or for your customers you will need to create other accounts so you choose their username their password add some information and you have a lot of settings to give them access to the resources only for example during their work time so they won't be able to connect from home or at forbidden time. And you have fine-tuned control about what they are able to do on Guacamole. In most cases, you won't grant them some uh, admin features, but if it's your team and you want them to manage it with you, you can make them administrator and create user group, etc. And one great feature is that you can grant them specific access to any instance. Do you want them to only have access to one server, which is there? You would check it. You can also create group and give them access to one specific group. Let's see it. Go back here, 
Let's go into groups. We create a new group. Let's name it dev, for example. You can make it disabled temporarily, define the different permissions, and you select which instances are within this group. Let's only add the dev instance. We hit save. And now we have that group created and we can manage this whole group. So we can share access to uh, users to only this group and do restriction not only on a server base, but within group that could contain multiple server for one particular client. Let's see two other good things that you should consider for your security. Let's go back to LSTO and our instance, go to overview and you have access to your Guacamole instance settings here. So you can go to update config and you can see the default Docker compose that we use to create and configure your instance. And you have here it is commented to enable two factor authentication. So if you want it, you just uncomment those lines and hit update and restart. It's good if you want to add additional security to your Guacamole instance. Then another great thing, which is very important when you create a bastion, is you want to give only access to Guacamole to your different servers. For example, on our Windows instance, we had access it through the port 3389. We can go to security and add a firewall to only grant access to the port 3389 to this very instance only. So you would use that IP and only that IP can access a Windows instance. When you get the access on Guacamole, no one will have access to that Windows instance. Same for the Ubuntu one, but you would block the port 22 or any else you are using. This is a good measure to avoid to be exposed and vulnerable from attacks online. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or need help, don't hesitate to join us on Discord. Link in the description below. If you want to support the channel, the like button helps us to be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overview or watch one of our existing ones like this one, available here.